We're in an interesting situation when it comes to the wider Nintendo fan base. The NES and Super Nintendo audience is getting older. They are starting families. They are moving on with their lives. They're not sitting around on YouTube screaming about how Nintendo was better during the early 90s or how they peaked during the, the NES era and how everything since then has been a mistake. The nostalgia-blinded fanboys, the nostalgic man-children of yesteryear, of early YouTube, are giving way to a wider audience who have wildly different opinions and don't necessarily have all played the same consoles or games, right? We have Fire Emblem fans. We have WarioWare fans. We have uh, platforming fans, RPG fans, right? You know, uh, Life Sim fans. Right. Like we're not really we don't really have the same shared experience that that people had in the 80s of like uh, playing the NES when it first came out, discovering Super Mario Bros. And then like uh, waiting for all these amazing games to come out. Like people have a wide range of opinions when it comes to the company, what they personally enjoy and what they're looking forward to. What this means is that it's becoming impossible for the industry to try and say that Nintendo has fallen off or that they've become irrelevant or that nothing is coming out because back in the day, like, they could do this thing like, oh, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is way better than Super Mario Bros. And they don't need to prove it. They don't need to, like, explain what makes Sonic better. All they have to do is just be like, oh, he goes fast, blast processing, and then people would buy Sonic, right? Whether or not, like, uh, it was actually better than Super Mario doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter that the uh, the game never really caught on and that the uh, the series stagnated even by, like, the third entry, right? People, uh, people still bought Sonic. They still like Sonic. And to this day, I still see people try to say that, like, Sonic was so much better than Mario. Like, it was just a uh, a shield campaign by game journals by sega to attack nintendo and attack this like iconic company and brand right it ended in failure just like all the other attacks on the brand but at the same time they tried and they tried to compete with nintendo and uh that kind of behavior is becoming impossible, right? It's really interesting to me to see what happened with Super Mario Bros. Wonder. To see people, like, try to say that, like, oh, it's just a rehash, it's the same game we've always gotten, it's a minor release, it's a 2D platformer, nobody cares about it, nobody is talking about it, is, like, the line that they kept beating us over and over and over again, leading up to release and uh, during Game Awards season. Like, Super Mario Bros. Wonder was heavily downplayed by the gaming audience. But what is going to happen? This game is going to sell millions of units every year. It's going to be a driving force of Switch sales for the near future, right? People are going to discover the game and realize how good it is and uh, grow up playing the game and slowly uncover everything there is in it. You know, beat the game, go through uh, 100% it. You know, gamers are going to realize over time that this game is actually a masterpiece and 20 years from now out of all the games that were hyped up this year last year with uh, you know alan woke 2 and starfield and uh baldo's gate 3 like super mario Bros. wonder is going to be the most fondly remembered and played out of all of them right this game at, at the end at the end of the day, is going to sell far over 30 million units, right? People don't understand that this game is going to stay very relevant over a long period of time. The coat that people had to like, oh, 13 million units isn't is it successful is is just completely delusional. It was it was completely out of touch with reality, right? You know, the coat they had with Tears of the Kingdom, like, oh, it only sold 20 million units, it bombed. Like, that's that's not going to stick either. Especially since we're getting a new Zelda game this year, right? Again, how exactly are people going to be able 
to downplay every Nintendo game that comes out, right? It simply isn't happening. You know, Fire Emblem Engage was one of the more polarizing uh, Fire Emblem games in recent memory, right? With its, like, visual style and, like, its tone and stuff like that. And, like, everybody called it a bomb and everybody called it a disaster. I think that game was successful. I think a lot of people really, really enjoyed that game for what it was and that it will still be very relevant going forward, right? Like, I think uh, that game does have an audience, right? Like, it's becoming more and more clear to me that this um, this classic method of downplaying every Nintendo game that comes out it has failed, right? It has completely collapsed among itself, right? Like, again, I grew up being told that, like, oh, Metroid Prime is lame, Metroid Fusion is lame, only Super is good, Nintendo has dropped the ball with Metroid, and, and that led to this uh, period of time where we just didn't get any Metroid games. And that led to that obnoxious period from 2010 to 2017, where everybody complained about not getting new Metroid games. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me that you hate modern Metroid games. You hated the all the great games we got in the, the, the 2000s, right? You know, you hate Metroid Fusion, you hate Metroid Prime, you hate Prime 2, you hate Prime 3, you know, Hunters, Pinball. Like, you're going to complain about all of that. And then post Other M, you're going to start complaining about not getting Metroid games. It's almost like you actually like these games and are just complaining about them for the sake of complaining about them, right? That feels – that is the current situation we're in when it comes to the Nintendo audience, right? These people cannot complain about everything that comes out because it, le- it has led to this culture where nobody really cares what they have to say about anything. Right? Again, I find myself really interested in, like, seeing how uh, Sean Malstrom has been acting in recent years. Because it's become really obvious to anyone who knows what he is, who, like, reads the blog regularly and knows what he's spouting all the time, that this guy would never be pleased with anything. Right? He spent legit, like, 20 years, right, complaining about how Nintendo doesn't put out new 2D Mario games and how 3D is a failure, and how, like, Nintendo needs to go back to, like, the 2D style, what happens? Nintendo puts out an innovative 2D platformer in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and he hates it, right? Like, oh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder Bread! Nobody is talking about it. He bought into all those memes, all those narratives about the game. He insists it's not very good, that it's not very good, that nobody is talking about it. And uh, people call them out on it. Right, people realized that his complaints about not getting 2D Mario were completely unfounded. Right, people called him out on his nonsense, and people began to feel that his complaints about 3D Mario were unwarranted. And as a result of that, he uh, recently he had to come out and try to claim that he does not hate 3D Mario. Which led to, uh, you know, people like me laughing at it, right? Because these guys do not have an audience of people in their own age group, right, anymore, right? Now it's people who are younger, people who have, like, wildly different experiences. Like, 3D Mario has been popular for a very, very long time, right? So this idea that, like, uh, 3D Mario is going to kill the brand, that it's not very popular, or that people don't like it, or that, like, it wasn't, like, a reasonable direction to take the series. It's it's fallen completely flat on its face. And uh, considering Sean Malstrom's, like, you know, go-to thing of, like, oh, but the 2D platformer sold more. Like, I think Odyssey right now has sold more than Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now, that's probably not going to be the case forever, right? But there's no denying that for the first time ever that a 3D Mario game has outperformed a 2D one. And I would argue that, like, that's not deserved. I think Wonder is actually better than Odyssey. But, like, you know, Odyssey did do huge things for the brand, right? It spearheaded the successful Switch lineup, and it's uh, it's a big deal, even though I personally don't like it as much as many other Mario games. But, like, you know, that's a preference thing. You know, people can enjoy Odyssey for what it is. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. And that's the core problem when it comes to pretendos, is that they simply can't allow people to enjoy video games. You know, how many times have I, like, how many times have they fought 
to uh, to prevent like niche Nintendo games from getting talked about? You know, how many times do they like insist that Nintendo doesn't make new IPs and then turns around and condemns all the new IPs that get made? You know, stuff like Splatoon, stuff like Arms, stuff like Codename Steam, Ever Oasis. Like we were getting like a ton of IPs, new IPs all the time in in the new tens, right? Especially on 3DS. And what happened? You spit on almost all of them, right? And of course, new IPs still get made, but Nintendo has to go through this process of of just making sure that these games don't get downplayed by game drones, right? And, and that's like the legit problem. Uh, it always has been. Is that is that people feel this compulsive need to try and declare all of these games failures before they even come out, right? And it's something that it's a challenge that needs to be overcome for sure. But um, people like Sh- uh, most of them aren't helping, right? Because none of their observations make any sense. They're just old fucks who don't really like video games, who can't really. Uh, they're just old men yelling at clouds is uh, the experience uh, is the term I use to describe this behavior. Cause like nothing Nintendo does would ever make these people happy. Right. No- nothing Nintendo does would ever like make them realize that like, Oh, this is actually a really good company. And there's a reason I've been following them so long. No, like every single time they simply find something new to complain about. You know, right now it's complaining about DEI and like the supposed wokeification of Nintendo, and like uh, how the next Nintendo console is allegedly allegedly going to fail, or how the Nintendo Museum is a waste of resources or something. Like, but a year from now it's going to be completely different. Like already the weird complaints about the Nintendo Museum are completely collapsing in and up, in and around themselves. Right? Like, why exactly do we feel the need to condemn Nintendo for everything they do? Like, this is a company that has delivered nothing but high-quality products for the past 40 years. And it's time that we start acknowledging that this is one of the best entertainment brands in the world. Not just in gaming, but in every medium. 